government accounting and accounting for non-profit organizations. So first, let us have an overview of the course. So this is a specialization course designed to provide the students with accounting knowledge and skills that are applicable to the financial reporting of government entities and non-profit entities. The financial reporting of government entities, unlike profit business accounting, is governed by the Government Accounting Manual for National Government Agencies or the NGAs, as promulgated by the Commission on Audit. So the financial reporting of non-profit entities naman is governed by the Philippine Financial Reporting Standards or the PFRS. So we have the following learning objectives for this chapter or the overview of government accounting. So ano ba yung tinatawag natin na government accounting? Pursuant to Section 109 of the Presidential Decree 1445, government accounting is defined as one which encompasses the processes of analyzing, recording, classifying, summarizing, and communicating all transactions involving the receipt and disposition of government funds and property, and interpreting the results thereof. Like accounting for business entities, financial reporting for government entities also has the overall objective of providing information that is useful for decision making. However, it places greater em emphasis on the efficient and effective utilization of government funds in which responsibility, accountability, and liability over government funds and properties are imposed. So there are three main differences between government accounting and profit business accounting. So first, they differ in the accounting standards used. Second, in the financial statements issued and third is in the reporting. So this will be discussed later, but first uh, let us identify the objectives of government accounting. First, uh, as provided in Section 110 of the Presidential Decree 1445, so the following are the objectives of government accounting. First is to produce information concerning past operations and present conditions. Second is to provide a basis for guidance for future operations. Third is to provide control uh, of the acts of public bodies and offices in the receipt disposition and the utilization of funds and property and last is to report on the financial position and the results of operations of government agencies for the information of all persons concerned. So information of past operations and present conditions will facilitate the evaluation of the performance of an agency from one period to another. The results of the evaluation may guide the manager or the public official on what course of action to take as regards future operation, as well as come up with a proper analysis of the funds needed for a project or a program. The accounting data resulting from the government accounting process will show whether the agency is achieving its mandate as well as its operational objectives. Just like Romblon State University, for example, being a state university, accounting for uh, the university's transaction is guided by the, uh, the government accounting manual, which is uh, or which will be discussed later. The result of the university's accounting process will provide evidence on how the university is achieving its mandate uh, stated in its new mission, which is to provide quality higher education and learning environment in agriculture, fisheries, forestry, arts and sciences, business and accountancy, education, engineering and technology and other related disciplines, ensuring uh, the development of competent professionals and conducting relevant research and extension programs using modern and appropriate technology conforming with international standards. Moreover, um, the financial reports will also show the extent of the agency's um, financial and non-financial resources which have useful lives, just like the buildings, machineries, and laboratories, which the users of information can evaluate in determining the service potential, as well as give indication when additional resources need to be injected into 
the operation. As mentioned earlier, there is emphasis on responsibility, accountability, and liability over government funds and property. So ano ba yung sinasabi natin? Responsibility, accountability, and liability over government funds and property. As mentioned earlier, the end goal is for the government resources to be utilized efficiently and effectively. By word efficient, we refer to doing things right. Ibig sabihin, the government agency can deliver a given quantity and quality outputs with minimum inputs or the agency can maximize outputs out of the limited resources entrusted to it. Uh, by effective naman, on the other hand, it refers to doing the things right or doing the right things. Meaning, uh, the operating units are able to achieve the expected results and contribute to the achievement of the organization's goal. So the head of the government agency is directly responsible in implementing um, the efficient and effective utilization of government funds policy and is primarily responsible for government resources entrusted to his agency. Kumbaga, uh, sa RSU, the university president shall be primarily responsible for the university's resources, while those entrusted with the possession of the university's resources, like the cashier holding the university's cash, shall be directly responsible to the university president and is accountable for its safeguard and is liable for its loss. Um, kung sa private entities, uh, the management has the primary responsibility for the preparation and presentation of financial statement, sino naman ang may accounting responsibility for government agencies? So the following offices are charged with government accounting responsibility. First, we have the Commission on Audit, the Department of Budget and Management, the Bureau of Treasury, and the different government agencies. So isa-isahin natin ano ba yung mga responsibilities nitong iba't ibang offices charged with government accounting responsibility. First is on the Commission on Audit. So um, the Commission on Audit is responsible for the promulgation, first promulgation of accounting and auditing rules. So as mandated by uh, the 1987 Constitution of the Philippines, the Commission on Audit shall have exclusive authority subject to the limitation to define the scope of its audit and examination, establish the techniques and methods required therefore, and promulgate accounting and auditing rules and regulations including those for the prevention of, the, of disallowance of irregular, unnecessary, excessive, extravagant, or unconscionable expenditures or uses of government funds and properties. Bale, uh, these types of expenditures will be discussed naman in the succeeding chapters. So second responsibility of the Commission on Audit is to keep the general accounts of the government. Ibig sabihin, the supporting vouchers and other documents ay sila yung magtatago. So in, in government, we follow this what we call voucher system, a waterizing cash disbursement. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng transaction is, ebed, uh, is supported by a voucher. In which case, the voucher is supported by at, uh, original supporting documents at lahat yun ay pinapasa sa COA. So ang tanong, ano, ano na lang ba yung naiiwan doon sa ating government agency? So yung uh, naiiwan na lang na copy doon sa mga government agencies after submission sa COA is yung mga photocopies or yung mga duplicate copies na lang. And then last, uh, the COA is responsible for the submission of financial reports to the President and Congress within time fixed by law, not later than the last day of September each year as provided in Section 41 of PD 1445. So ang pinapasa nila is an annual report of the government, its subdivisions, agencies, and instrumentalities including government-owned or controlled corporations. Bali sila yung nagko-consolidate ng lahat ng reports ng government agencies and instrumentalities.
proceed sa responsibilities ng Department of Budget and Management. So the DBM is responsible for the formulation and implementation of the national budget. Pursuant to Section 2, Chapter 1, Title 17 of Book 4 of the Administrative Code of the Philippines of or EO 292, the DBM shall be responsible for the formulation and implementation of the national budget with the goal of attaining our national socio-economic plans and objectives. So the Department of Budget and Management is tasked to control and monitor appropriations and allotment. Next, the Bureau of Treasury has the following responsibility. So it is responsible for cash custody and control of disbursement. The Bureau of Treasury plays a vital role in the cash operations of the national government. It, it functions as the cash custodian of the government and is authorized to first receive and keep national funds and manage and control the disbursement thereof and maintain accounts of financial transactions of all national government offices, agencies, and instrumentalities. Lastly, we have the following responsibility of government agencies. So government agencies are responsible for maintaining accounting books and budget registries which are reconciled with the cash records of the Bureau of Treasury and the budget records of the Commission on Audit and the Department of Budget and Management. So as you can observe, accounting responsibility is segregated to various government agencies which are the Commission on Audit, the Department of Budget and Management, Bureau of Treasury, and the different government agencies. So the segregation of responsibility serves the purpose of check and balance. Segregation of duties involves three main functions that must be conducted by different entities. So may, may tayo tinatawag na incompatible duties that must be segregated or hindi dapat ahawak ng isang entity lang. Okay, so these uh, incompatible uh, duties or functions are as follows. First is the custody of asset. Second, authorization for the use of the asset. And third is the record keeping of the asset. So the government agencies being the implementer of government programs and projects, accounting check and balance is properly observed by having the Bureau of Treasury as the cash custodian, the DBM as the one in charge for the authorization of the use of cash, and the Commission on Audit as the one in charge for the record keeping function. So um, the financial reporting system of the national government is summarized in a figure in the figure in page six. So, so you may re refer na lang doon sa page six for the summary of the uh, relationship and the function of the different uh, agencies. Let us proceed to the GAM for, G and, uh, for NGAs or the Government Accounting Manual. So prior to GAM, Government Accounting System was based on this what we call New, new Government Accounting System until it was replaced on January 1, 2016. So the GAM for NGAs was promulgated primarily to harmonize the government accounting standards with international accounting standards, particularly the International Public Sector Accounting Standards or the IPSAS. As mentioned earlier, one of the three main differences of government accounting and profit business accounting is the standards used. Unlike profit business accounting, in which the financial reporting is based on the international financial reporting standards adapted in the Philippines to the Philippine financial reporting standards, government accounting in the Philippines uses this what we call IPSAS adapted as the Philippine Public Sector Accounting Standards or PPSAS in the, prep in the preparation and presentation of financial statements. It is however to be noted that uh, the IPSAS are based on the International Financial Reporting 
standard. So since the PPSAS are based on the IPSAS, which are in turn based on the IFRS or the PFRS, most of the concepts used in the gov in government accounting ay natutunan nyo na rin during your intermediate accounting. So ano ba yung objectives ng GAM for NGAs? So the following are the objectives of the GAM. First is to update standards, policies, guidelines, and procedures in accounting for government funds and property. Second, to update coding structure and accounts and to update accounting books, registries, records, forms, reports, and financial statements. Let us go over with the basic accounting and budget reporting principles. So the financial records and reports of government entities shall comply the following. First, uh, it must comply with the PPSAS and the relevant laws, rules, and regulation. Second, the preparation of the financial statement is uh, on the accrual basis. Third, budget basis for presentation of budget information in the financial statements. Fourth, it must follow the revised chart of accounts prescribed by the Commission Audit. Fifth, it must follow the double entry bookkeeping. Next, financial statements based are based on accounting and budgetary records. And lastly, uh, fund cluster accounting is followed. So, uh, let me discuss na lang yung hindi kayo pamilyar pa. So, I have he here a snippet of uh, the revised chart of accounts prescribed by the Commission on Audit. So, the revised chart of accounts is basically a listing of account names and 10-digit account number. So, yung 10-digit account number is na-arrive by combining the 8 digits uh, RCA code or the revised chart of accounts code and the 2 digits unified account code structure sub object code. And isa pang unique uh, characteristic ng uh, or unique principle na pinafollow ng government accounting is hindi natawag natin ng fund clusters or fund clustering. So, uh, sa government accounting, uh, the books of accounts are maintained by fund cluster or according to the types of funds being accounted for. So, pwede itong uh, ang fund is we have the following codes for uh, the respective fund or respective fund type. Uh, 01 for regular agency fund. 02 for foreign assisted project funds. Meron tayong special account locally funded domestic grant fund. Special account foreign assisted foreign grant fund. Interna internally generated funds. Business related funds. And trust receipts. Ibig sabihin, uh, may sariling books and separate ang reporting for the different funds classified per cluster. Romblon State University, for example, ang practice ng Romblon State University, meron itong three fund clusters or meron itong tatlong libro na minimaintain. So, merong sariling books for the general fund or yung regular agency fund. Meron ding book yung uh, school income and fiduciary funds and then may may sariling books yung uh, income from income generating projects so next we have the qualitative characteristics ng uh, financial reporting that uh, make the information useful to users so we need not, we need not to discuss the following in detail na rin kasi uh, natutunan nyo na rin ito during your intermediate accounting. 
Pero identify na lang natin yung uh, different qualitative characteristics. So, yung mga qualitative characteristics that make the uh, information useful to the users are as follows. Understandability, relevance, materiality, timeliness, reliability, faithful representation, substance of reform, neutrality, prudence, completeness, and comparability. Let us continue to the different components of general purpose financial statements. So, mostly parehas lang din naman doon sa component na complete set ng financial statement. Allow me to highlight na lang the difference with uh, the profit business accounting. So, the financial statement unique to a government entity, this is what we call statement of comparison of budget and actual amount. So, in the statement, uh, presented dito yung uh, budget utilization rate wherein pinapakita kung ilang percent out of the authorized budget by the DBM ang na-utilize ng government agencies. So, uh, this statement will be elaborated naman in the succeeding chapters. Lastly, we have uh, the criteria for recognition of asset which is similar lang naman from the concepts learned in the intermediate accounting. So, hindi natin ito i-discuss in detail kasi you are, uh, it is assumed na alam nyo na rin yung concept of uh, asset recognition. Let us proceed to uh, the discussion of problem 1 to 3 for the application of concepts learned in this chapter. For problem 1-1, one one, true or false question. First, compared to the accounting for uh, business entities, government accounting places greater emphasis on the sources and utilization of government funds and management stewardship over government resources. So, answer is true. So, it is uh, I discussed naman earlier that the main difference of government accounting with uh, private business accounting is that it uh, places greater emphasis on the uh, utilization of uh, government funds. Second question, taxes are uh, the main source of funds of the government. The answer is true. Taxes are the lifeblood of the government and their prompt and certain availability are an imperious need. So a government cannot continue to exist and operate without financial means or yung source ng funds to be used for the operation. Number three, other sources of funds of the government include fees, borrowings, and grants from other governments and international bodies. The answer is true. In addition to the taxes collected by the government, other sources of funds are as follows. Number four, currently, the financial reporting of government entities is based on NGAS or the uh, new government accounting standards. Answer is false because since uh, 2016, financial reporting for government entities is now based on the GAM or the government accounting manual. Number five, the principles used in financial reporting of government entities are very unique but only a very few of these principles are similar to those that are applied to business entities. Answer is false. Again, uh, similar, medyo similar yung uh, principles applied in government accounting and business entities. Kasi nga, the uh, IPSAS adapted as PPSAS is patterned from IFRS, adapted to Philippines as PFRS. Number six, the principles used in the GAM for NGAs are similar to the principles in the PFRS. Answer is true. Again, the IPSAS is patterned sa IFRS or PFRS as adapted in the Philippines. Number seven, the GAM for NGAs is promulgated by the Philippine Congress under the authority conferred to it under the Philippine Constitution. Answer is false kasi nga, ang may exclusive 
promulgation of accounting and auditing rules ay ang commission on audit. Number eight, a unique financial reporting requirement of government entities is the use of fund cluster accounting. Under fund cluster accounting, separate books and reports are prepared for each type of fund held by a government entity. Answer is true. Number nine, the GAM for NGAs is promulgated primarily to harmonize government accounting standards with the U.S. GAAP. Answer is false, because the GAM is promulgated to harmonize government accounting standards with the International Public Sector Accounting Standard Council adopted in the Philippines as the Philippine Public Sector Accounting Standards. Number 10, an item is recognized as an asset if it meets both the probable future economic benefits and reliable measurement criteria, regardless of whether the item is a resource controlled arising from past events. So, the answer is false because one of the criteria for asset recognition is that the asset must the 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 item must be controlled by the entity. Let's proceed to problem one to two, multiple choice questions. For number one, which of the following is a unique requirement of government accounting that is not required in the accounting for business entities? The answer is the preparation or the presentation of budget information in the financial statement. Number two, what is the legal basis of the COA in promulgating the GAM for NGAs? The answer is the Philippine Constitution. Number three, which of the following is tasked in keeping the general accounts of the government, supporting vouchers and other documents? The answer is COA. Number four, the Bureau of Treasury is responsible for receiving and keeping national funds, and managing and controlling the disbursements thereof. Number five, according to the GAM for NGAs, the basis of accounting to be applied by the government entities is the accrual basis. Number six, government resources must be utilized efficiently and effectively in accordance with the law. According to PD number 1445, who is directly responsible in implementing this policy? The head of the government agency. Number seven, the transfer of government funds from one officer to another requires prior authorization of the Commission on Audit. Number eight, Mr. A, a government employee entrusted with the custody of government funds, was instructed by Mr. B, a politician, to release funds for the acquisition of a car as a gift, as a birthday gift for Mr. B's daughter, who will be having her 18th birthday next week. To relieve Mr. A from any liability, what should Mr. A do? The answer is letter A. Mr. A shall not release the fund, but rather notify Mr. B in writing that his instruction is legal. Again, the government funds must be used for government purposes only. Number nine, Mr. C, a government employee entrusted with the custody of government funds, has lost the government funds entrusted to him in a force majeure. What should Mr. C do to relieve him from liability? Answer is letter B. Mr. C should immediately notify the POA within 30 days. Uh, otherwise, Mr. C will not be relieved of his liability over uh, the lost government funds. Number 10, this refers to the attributes that make information useful to users. Answer is letter C, qualitative characteristic. Number 11, information loses this qualitative characteristic if it is not reported on a timely basis. Answer is relevant. Number 12, which of the following qualitative characteristics does an entity most likely would need to make some trade-offs? Relevance and rely reliability. Number 13, an entity recognizes an estimated loss from a decline in value of a property, which of the following is most likely the qualitative characteristic being applied by the entity. Answer is prudence. Number 14, which of the following is not one of the fund clusters of government entity? 
Answer is letter E, the cash fund. This is only a component of the cash uh, balance. Number 15, to achieve a proper balance between relevance and reliability, the overriding consideration is letter A, how users' needs are best satisfied. And uh, last, problem one does three. Number one, how does the government accounting differ from accounting from the accounting for business entities? The answer is letter C, government accounting places greater emphasis in sources and utilization of funds in accordance with the law and management stewardship over government resources entrusted to the entity. Number two, which of the following is not a source of revenue for the government? Answer is letter D, contract price on government contracts awarded to private companies. Uh, this is a disbursement rather than a source of funds. So the rest are sources of revenue other than letter D. Number three, Entity A, a government agency, is entrusted with government resources according to PD 1445, who is the directly responsible for the efficient and effective utilization of these resources. The answer is letter B, the head of the entity A. Number four, which of the following is the charge with government accounting responsibility under the GAM for NGAs? Answer is letter D, House of Representatives. Number five, the Department of Budget and Management is responsible for that will be the formulation and implementation of the national budget with the goal of attaining the nation's socio-economic objectives. Number six, which of the following is not one of the objectives of the GAM for NGA? The answer is letter D, to update government accounting standards to be consistent with the provisions of the U.S. GAAP. Number seven, all of the following are requirements peculiar to a government entity. So which is not? Number, answer is letter D, accrual basis of accounting. Accrual basis of accounting also applies to business entities and therefore not peculiar to government entities only. Number eight, which of the following qualitative characteristics is improved when information is reported on a timely basis? Answer is letter A, relevant. Number nine, what the best estimate for a loss is 100,000. However, the entity deliberately overstated the loss to 200,000. Which of the following qualitative characteristics is violated? Answer is letter C, C A, and B or prudence and reliability. So prudence does not allow the deliberate overstatement of liability. And reliability is affected since it is inherent in reliability that the uh, uh, transaction must be presented faithfully or meron tayo ng tinatawag na faithful representation or kung ano yun nangyari, yun yung ating ipipresent. And last, number which of the following financial statements is pe peculiar to a government entity? The answer is letter C, statement of comparison of budget and actual amount. So that ends our uh, discussion for chapter one, overview of government accounting.